My name is Carson. Welcome to Thrifty Garage, a channel where we do everyday repairs, how-tos, and reviews. And in today's video, we'll be installing this Hunter X2 controller in a client's house. I own and operate a landscape business, and we'll be installing this at a client's house. So this is our sprinkler controller, and this has a wand capability, so it will be able to hook up to their Wi-Fi. When it comes to installing a sprinkler controller, most of the components are the same. You have your main controller box, a power source, and your wires for your sprinklers. In this situation, it comes with a cord, so we need to find a place to plug that in. We need an outlet to plug that into. This particular install will be done in a backyard shed. The best way to route the wires for the sprinkler valves was up through the floor of the shed. Here I'm drilling out the floor with a hole saw for our conduit to go through. I'll be using three quarter inch conduit as a chase for the wires. Before final installation, we'll do a test fit on the length of the conduit and ensure it's at the correct height for the controller installation. Once we've determined our height, we can cut the pipe to the right length. This controller has a nice sleeve to slide right onto the conduit, which makes things really nice and easy. With the conduit, I found that a snug fit works just fine, but if you prefer, you can always use some conduit glue. Next, we lined up the screw holes to know where to install them in the shed. The top screw has a sliding slot. You simply slide it on and let gravity hold it into place. And then the lower screw will be held in with a screw from inside the box. Next, I marked the lower screw with a level to ensure it will be a straight and clean look. And we marked the distance between screws from inside the box. To save effort, I used the excavator to trench as much of this as possible to get the wire over to this location for the shed. And the last little portion was dug with a shovel. Now the wires can be laid in the trench from the sprinkler valves to the controller location and up to the conduit. usually best to run wire through conduit before any joints are glued uh, just to ensure that the wire can be easily pushed through especially if there's any joints or turns in the conduit. Once we fully run the wires and put our conduit back together we can install the final screw in the controller. Uh, you can see here using the level to make sure it's a nice clean level look. Once you get up to the controller I like to leave about 12 inches of extra wire so we have extra working room and then we can always trim that back once we're uh, down to our final install. In the controller I like to remove all of the insulation so all you can see is the multi-strand wire. It just reduces any bulk that's inside the controller. This uh, controller specifically is a little bit tight in the working space so the more room the better. These multi-strand wires do come with a little string to help pull the insulation off but I found it usually breaks uh, so I usually use a wire that I don't plan on using. Uh, to connect up the controller. Uh, when you do use a wire to pull back the insulation, sometimes you can damage that wire, so I always make sure it's definitely not the white common wire or it's not a one that I've already got wired up to a valve. At this point, if you already know what color your wires are at the valves, you can put them in whatever configuration you want. Obviously, your white wire goes to your common. Whatever colors I do use, I always try to make it an easy combination to remember, and also it's a good idea to take pictures so when you're at the valve box wired up you uh, don't have to go back and forth as up much. I always like to leave my controllers 
nice, clean, and tidy. Uh, it just looks best that way. It also makes it easier to work on in the future. And with this controller, this client keeps this shed under lock and key. So uh, whether I'm installing a controller in a garage or any other locked environment, I always like to install a Wi-Fi controller so as a contractor I can access the sprinklers and turn them on. This particular job we installed new sod, so uh, making adjustments, fine-tuning and adjusting that. Uh, it's always nice not to have to ask the homeowner for a key to that shed, so the Link Wi-Fi module really makes that super nice. Uh, the shed was in a proximity to the house that did um, favor the ability to use a Wi-Fi controller. That is one thing you have to look for when you do Wi-Fi is if you have a Wi-Fi signal at the desired controller location. Well, that about wraps up this install. Just simply plug it in and we're ready to go. Programming and installation of the Link Wi-Fi module would be the next step in this process. Unfortunately, the homeowner was present for those two things, so we did not capture that video footage uh, to share here on YouTube, but we'll definitely have to capture that on our next install. Well, thanks for watching this install on the Hunter X2 controller. Hopefully it was enjoyable and informative. And uh, if you aren't already subscribed, be sure to hit the subscribe button. Thanks for watching Thrifty Garage, and we'll see you on the next one.